friends uh, let's start this course which is cell signaling course if you remember the introductory video where i spoke about that we will discuss all different aspects of signaling which basically means that why we need signaling what we will achieve by signaling what are the components which are required to execute a signaling process as well as what are the diversity which exists in signaling where do we see this signaling going on what basically a cell which is an animal signals and how a cell in the plant signals whether these are very different or there are certain common pathways we will discuss all that in this context let's start with the idea which says what is signaling if we understand what exactly signaling is then we realize that it is nothing but a communication it is the way by which two entities communicate with each other a entity sends a signal the other entity receives the signal processes the signal and then responds to the signal eventually inside the cell when we will discuss more in detail the cell signaling aspects we'll realize that one cell is generating a signal other cell will be receiving that signal and depending on what is the cell type what is the signal it will make a response we will see further into that so signaling in simplest term is nothing but a communication a way to establish communication like in this picture you can see that this boy is trying to communicate with this girl and there is a mean which has been used to communicate and you will need a media through which it will be communicating similarly in case of cell signaling you will need something to initiate the signal something to receive the signal and something which helps communicate this entire process now when we talk about the signal as such or the signaling process so if i ask what is signaling so one can consider that signaling is nothing but a perception what it means is that when we are in a surrounding the temperature the pressure or other factors which are around us we perceive them as it is what they are representing so susan langer said that a signal is comprehended if it serves to make us notice the object or the situation it bespeaks what it means that if in front of your eyes there is a book and you cannot understand if it is a book rather you say that it is a pen then it's not serving the purpose so proper signaling is not happening so signal must com be comprehended at the same time symbol must be understood here symbol is representative of signal so it should be understood in proper context and it should give the idea which it represents so like in case if you have a symbol of rupee you understand it denotes certain values or it's a monetary unit by which one can transact similarly here symbols or signals will be produced and they should be comprehended now if you think about signaling in world around us you would realize that probably radio or television they are very good system which integrate the aspects of signaling and if you would have studied and understood the different aspects of transmission which happens in radio or in television you would realize that one of the foremost component which is required over there is transmitter what exactly transmitter will do it will generate the signal which will be through antenna it will be delivered but in the process to generate that signal it will require a power supply it will require these oscillator and modulators which will hone the signal which is generated then there will be amplifier which will amplify the signal because there is a certain intensity of signal which must be generated to be perceived eventually now this signal which is amplified will be transmitted through this antenna 
in case of the other end in this process of radio signaling or in case of uh, video transmission at the other end you will need a receiver what this receiver is going to do is through the antenna which is presented here it will receive the signal in once the signal is received it is further amplified so that a response is mounted inside the cell if we will talk as later in detail that when cells are signaling so now if we bring parallel to this receiver as a cell it should have an antenna on its surface then it should have mechanism to amplify the signal to hone it down further and have suitable detectors inside the cell these detectors help it not only amplify the signal but also direct it so that a final output is generated in case of audio or the television transmission eventually you will have a speaker which will be giving out the audio outputs now when we talk about the signal transduction or signaling cell cell signaling intracellular signaling there are different types of signaling but what exactly the signaling or signal transduction mean basically it tells you that it is a process where you convert the interactions which are happening at the extracellular surfaces and there is an interpretation which is going deep inside. If you look at this GIF what you would realize that there is a neuron which is releasing the neurotransmitter here and this neurotransmitter when goes inside these muscle cells or it signals inside the muscle cell what exactly it ends up achieving is the contraction of the muscle. So basically in the process of signaling as shown here what you end up doing is that you could perceive the presence of a neurotransmitter you could activate the muscle cell so that they undergo contraction. Now if you draw parallel maybe you long time back you or very recently you understood a terminology which was called bacterial transduction. This was a means by which bacteria could or organism can transfer gene inside the bacteria. What happens here in this case generally a bacteria which has a circular DNA, a phage like entity lands on its surface and injects the genetic material. This genetic material now affects the genomic DNA of bacteria and ensures that this bacteria ends up producing multiple of these phage like particles in its system. Right. So, what you notice here is the in case of bacterial transduction that bacteria or the bacteriophage remains outside it does not enter inside the bacteria. However, it injects something inside the bacteria which is good enough to produce more bacteriophages. Similarly, in case of signal transduction signal need not enter inside the cell. So, if you think about a cell and there is a presence of a signal. The signal literally need not go inside the cell. However, it should be able to bind something which is present at the cell surface. There the binding will initiate the cascade of event which I showed you in the previous slide where we discuss about the receiver which had the modulator which had the tuner. Similarly, through binding of the signal to the receptor there will be tuning event which will be happening inside and in response to the signal eventual response will be mounted. So, here once you have the signal bound to its receptor tuning which will happen inside there will be specific response will be mounted. So, this was a some sort of parallel which I wanted to draw between a bacterial transduction event 
and the signal transduction event. Now, if we think about the signaling, this process could be extremely fast or extremely slow. What we know is that in our body or many organisms, they have neurons and we know that how quickly neurons work. If you remember the reflex processes, before your hand touches a hot pan, your finger moves away from that. It's, it's a very quick process. So the signaling process which happens in the living world could be extremely rapid like seen in case of neuronal system. If you see this GIF, you would realize that how signal is passing quickly from one end of the neuron to the other end of the neuron. Or it could be extremely slow. What do you mean by extremely slow uh, signaling? Is that here the process of signaling will start but the response will be mounted very late. Something of this sort is seen in plants where during autumn season plants shed their leaves and when the spring comes these plants again get the flowers and get the leaves. I am sure you all would have noticed that the plants lose their leaves completely in autumn and then during the spring they get the leaves and you would have also noticed that before they get the leaves they probably flower which means that some sort of signaling event is initiated in plants at the time of autumn season and later in the spring season you see flowering first and then leaves coming or simultaneously flowers and leaves are coming. So in the process in between there is a long duration which winter encompasses, the signal is generated at the time of autumn, but eventual flowering or leaf coming will be executed way later. So this is an example of very slow kind of signaling which happens in the living being. Now if we go further, what we understand that there are multiple requirements of the signaling process. I told in one of the earlier slides that you will need a transmitter which will be serving as the source of the signal. Then you will need the signal itself and eventually you will need the receiver. So three components are essential for the signaling process. Transmission uh, or transmitter or the source, signal, stimulus, ligand, we will come across these different terminologies as we go deeper in this course and then you will need a receiver or the sink. Basically you need one place where signal is generated, it travels a distance, a distance could be large, distance could be uh, small and until it finds something as a receiver or in this course we will see that this is called receptor. So a cell if we, con if we talk in context of signaling in the living world, we are talking about the cells which are communicating to each other, tissues which are responding to the signal which has been received from other cell type. So you will have a cell which produces the signal. Then you will need a ligand or the signal itself and then you have a cell which is receiving the signal. So often this cell which receives the signal is called target cell and the cell which is generating the signal is called source cell. 
what i have understood told you here is that the nature of this transmitter or the one which is producing the signal could be biotic or abiotic in nature which means that around us the signal could be produced by a cell or a living being or it is not being produced from the living being i'm sure you understand when i say abiotic source of signal basically the light which you perceive heat which you perceive or pressure if i extrapolate further to the heat and say temperature so what you would notice that the receiver of the signal will have different types of arrangement it could be cell it could be tissue or it could be an organism itself because we know that there is prevalence of unicellular organisms right and i was telling you is that the signal itself could be biotic or abiotic in nature the abiotic signals we spoke about light heat and then pressure and temperature right now if you think about the cells which we which are going to receive these signals right so your transmitter could be have or signal could be having a source which is abiotic or biotic however in case of cell cell signaling we will only have biotic entities as receiver or a sink so we will see in further classes that what exactly how these transmitters source cells signal producing uh, entities are arranged how receiver cells the tissues or the receptors are of different types what we have understood in probably in the today's class is that what all is signaling almost everything which is around us including the communication which we do the perception of environment which we have or the response which we mount to what we perceive as signal or the reactions which we do to these signaling why signaling is needed or what signaling needs signaling needs a signal a transmitter and a responding receiver why i mentioned responding receiver because in case you have a receiver which cannot recognize the signal it basically does not serve as the receiver what signaling is needed for almost for everything whether it is to respond to the signal which affects our health our life or our existence altogether because if we suddenly we stop res responding to the levels of oxygen around us will be basically dying right so it is a very important that we respond to the signal which effectively are affecting our health life and existence what we also learnt in the class today is that the signaling has different nature it could be very fast or it could be slow it could be happening between the entities we will also see that how signaling further is restricted within the cell or it is communicating to the neighboring cells thank you Thank you.